Hi, I'm Elijah Stewart, psychic medium, root worker, and herbalist here in Lansing, Michigan. And today I am uh, speaking to you from the shop that I work out of, Coyote Wisdom Bookstore. Um, I happened to come in today and find this lovely, lovely plant hanging uh, in the corner by the door, uh, a bundle of mugwort, and I figured what a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to talk about uh, uh, one of my favorite plants. Uh, mugwort has a myriad of different medicinal and ritual uses. Um, uh, let's start with the medicinal first. Uh, medicinally, mugwort is typically used as a digestive bitter, um, and that means it stimulates the digestion um, and uh, helps to uh, move things along. Um, uh, it's usually done preventatively, so uh, before meals. Um, and my favorite way of including mugwort uh, as a digestive bitter is in vinegar form. Um, you can use tincture or even the fresh plant if you, uh, if you wanted, but it is rather bitter. Though not as bitter as, um, as some of its uh, cousins, such as wormwood in the Artemisia family. Um, now, in the East, in traditional Chinese medicine, mugwort is uh, used to treat many, many different um, uh, conditions. Uh, such as um, infertility due to a cold womb. Um, it's uh, also used for um, uh, colds, flu, uh, because it is diaphoretic, and it's also mildly nervine. Now, I don't recommend using mugwort in this way, but it was traditionally uh, uh, smoked uh, three to six lungs full um, to help alleviate insomnia and to calm the nerves. Now, I don't recommend using it in that way because Smoke isn't good for the lungs, um, but, uh, but that was how it was used. Um, you could use it as an inhalant, uh, uh, boiling it in water and inhaling it, or use it as a tincture or even a tea to help um, alleviate insomnia and steady the nerves uh, um, in its nervine effect. Now, there are many other medicinal uses of mugwort as well. Um, uh, when uh, you start considering it, uh, its uses topically, um, uh, and many people like the topical uses of mugwort a little bit better simply because mugwort is a bitter plant so they don't necessarily love the taste of it. <clears throat> um, one such use uh, that uh, my family used uh, was um, uh, using mugwort uh, to help treat poison ivy um, and to do so um, my grandmother would grab mugwort, chew it up, and then smear it uh, wherever I had been exposed to poison ivy to um, help alleviate the rash. Um, I, I, I go a little more formal. Uh, I add uh, hot water, uh, just a little bit of hot water as I'm grinding up um, the mugwort leaves uh, until they turn kind of into a mush, and then I let it cool down to room temperature before I smear it on as a plaster. Um, even better than that is avoiding getting poison ivy in the first place, which is my preferred method of treating poison ivy. Um, but, you know, uh, if you do run across it, it's good to have some mugwort handy. Um, in the East, once again, uh, a lot of acupuncturists would use mugwort um, uh, for its heating properties through a practice called moxibustion. And uh, moxibustion is uh, sort of almost... Uh, like using uh, mugwort incense, sort of, kind of. <clears throat> uh, what you would do is, after the plant dries, and this plant is not dry yet, it's um, still very moist, still very limp, but after it dries, you would uh, continue to allow it to age for a little while, and then um, simply take uh, uh, the parts, um, the flowers and leaves, so basically pull out the stems, and you would then rub it between your hands, um, until it created a woolly texture uh, out of the mugwort. Um, and uh, that doesn't take very long if it's been dried and aged properly. Uh, the woolly textured mugwort would then be um, uh, sort of compressed into uh, these sticks that would then be lit and um, held over uh, different acupu acupuncture points to help move uh, the energy in the meridians. It also uh, contains a deep penetrating heat when it's uh, um, uh, being burned. Uh, so uh, in the West, we could uh, uh, use it to help um, spasming muscles um, and anywhere that we would want a deep penetrating heat just to relax and, and 
allow for a greater flow of blood and energy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now on to the, uh, the ritual uses of mugwort. Uh, mugwort uh, was also used as a smudge, which I talked about in a different video. Native Americans actually called it the Great Sage. Um, and uh, other forms of Artemisia, uh, Artemisia plants, uh, its cousins wormwood and sagebrush were uh, also very commonly used as a smudge to help clear negative or stagnant energies. Um, with, uh, uh, with just the leaves after they've been dried, they're frequently used in dream pillows um, and uh, essentially, it's what it sounds like, a, a little pillow that is sewn and then stuffed with the leaves of mugwort. And when I do this, I like to add a little lavender just to give it a nice relaxing scent as well. Um, and this was reported to bring about uh, intuitive or prophetic dreams. Um, mugwort tea is frequently used in the same way. And um, uh, there's an old use of mugwort where if you're going to be uh, running a great distance uh, to take leaves, fresh leaves of mugwort and put them in your shoes for um, safety and uh, expedient travel. Now these are just a, sam a small sampling of the different uses of mugwort and if you were going to take mugwort internally um, I caution you it is an amemnagogue so uh, it can influence um, uh, menstruation. It should be avoided at all costs during pregnancy. Um, uh, unless you're uh, unless it's being um, uh, utilized by a qualified natural health practitioner someone who really knows what they're doing and, and who can monitor um, uh, monitor what's going on with it um, uh, I recommend if you're going to use uh, mugwort for medicinal purposes to seek out an herbalist um, or a naturopath uh, and uh, talk with them um, not just um, not just for safety reasons but um, you may, uh, even though it is a wonderful plant, and I think everybody should uh, have a little mugwort on hand to use, um, you may be a better match with a, a different herb for your needs. If you wanted to learn more about mugwort, um, I, I recommend a couple of different authors. Leslie Tierra is a wonderful author who um, uh, speaks mostly from the tra uh, traditional Chinese medical background. Uh, and has a wonderful entry uh, about mugwort in several of her books, so of course I'm going to love her. Um, I, on the, med, um, the magical or ritual uses, uh, Scott Cunningham did a pretty good job with mugwort and with most of the herbs in the Magical Herbal Encyclopedia. Um, I prefer Paul Bay Earle's Master Book of Herbalism, though, and this is simply personal preference. The, the information is good um, either way you go. Um, I just like the way Paul Bay Earle reads a little bit better. That's, like I said, just my preference. Um, I wanted to thank you for joining me today, this wonderful day after summer solstice here in Lansing, and I hope you all are having a wonderful, wonderful start to your summer. Blessings.